Good morning. <laughs> we're gonna do some vinyasa, some flow yoga. <laughs> so we're gonna start in a child's pose. You can add some extra support to your child's pose or just do a child's pose with no support whatsoever. <laughs> you can put a blanket under your shins. I'm gonna put a little pillow underneath my torso. Get a little bit more comfy. Let it kind of wobble side to side. If you hate child's pose, it's just not your jam. You could start a different way, it's fine. We'll just catch up together in a bit. And let yourself tune into the breath. One of the reasons I love child's pose is because you can feel the breath through the whole back. land right here in this moment mentally as well as physically <laughs> we'll let go of anything we're gonna do later or thoughts we might have about what's already happened we'll just try to stay present right here for the next little bit Stay where we are for about three more breaths. up to all fours. Bring the knees back in if they're a little wider. And let yourself do several oh, iterations of these little cat shapes. They could just go up and down. Or there could be some little kind of side to side cat shapes. Oh, maybe <laughs> a few of each. We're going to bring one leg forward for lunge. It could be on the right or the left. It doesn't really matter where you start. Now you can um, just hold a lunge in one spot. Or if you like, you can do what I'm going to do, which is go back and forth. So I'm going to go forward into this lunge. And then backward and sort of wind up, fold it over into a hamstring inner thigh stretch because of the angle that I'm doing with that. If I move myself more towards the center, it would be mostly focused on the hamstrings. Both options are great. <laughs> Just stay with one or move back and forth. I'm going to do one more movement. to neutral. 
I'm sure we'll take that right leg back. Give it a little shimmy. Oh. And then, oh, come back to a couple of rounds of cat. <laughs> and we'll do the other side. the left leg forward. Find the lunge shape. And come backward. Lunge. <laughs> backward. back and forth a few more times. And we're going to come back towards a neutral position. Facing dog, so you can do that anytime you like. If you are super friendly with downward dog, you might want to stay a while. If it's not your jam, <laughs> you can just use it long enough to get on your feet or skip it, get on your feet a different way. liquefy that dog. <laughs> Eventually turn it into a forward bend. <laughs> it's up to you. It's your pose. Eventually we will wind up standing up. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be all that soon. <laughs> happen. You can find your way to the whatever you think is the top of your mat. <laughs> Whatever's going to be the top of the mat today, the front of the mat. We'll pause there. So mountain pose is a nice <laughs> sort of um, almost blank slate pose, right? There's not a lot to it, except that there is. <laughs> There's a lot of sensations that we might not notice, like a tendency to kind of shift a little bit towards the right or the left or the toes or the heels, a tendency to maybe stiffen up or mess around in the shoulder girdle a little bit. Maybe the shoulder girdle is always a little bit tight. And so it just feels normal. <laughs> so just take a baseline reading of what your mountain pose feels like right now. As we go along, it might change. Take a nice big breath, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold, we'll step back into down dog. Now you could just hold dog, or if you'd like, you can come forward into a plank, modify or fold. We'll take one more breath in the plank, and then lower down and come into a cobra or an upward dog. We'll come back through to the plank and back to down dog.
take a breath and lift your right leg up behind you. Circle your ankle if it feels okay to do that in both directions. <laughs> and then we'll step that foot forward wherever it lands. Pause there. Look up and take that left foot and just bring it up toward it. Come up halfway. And then fold. And come all the way up to standing. Nice big stretch. Find our way back to mountain pose. And again, just notice how it lands. Hmm. Nice big breath, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold, we'll step back to dog. Again, you can just stay put or come forward to plank and stay put. And lower down and come into Cobra. <laughs> and then back to plank and back to dog. We'll take a three-legged dog. Left leg up this time. Little circles through the ankle. And then we'll step that left leg forward, look up. Bring the right one up toward it, come up halfway. And fold. And all the way up to standing. Ooh, nice big stretch. When you get there, find a mountain pose. We just check back in. <laughs> now the mountain pose might feel different. A little taller, a little lighter, slightly more vibrant. I don't know. Maybe none of those things. <laughs> Mine sort of feels all of those things. <laughs> Take a nice big breath, reach your arms up. We're going to grab this right wrist. Oh, give a little stretch over, a little crescent stretch. Come and back to the center. Put all the weight in your right leg. Now you can do any balancing pose you want. Today's a wobbly day. <laughs> you might keep it a little bit more conservative. Um, if it's not so wobbly, maybe get really crazy with your balancing pose. Try pushing the limits. One more breath. Oh, we're gonna pick up this left foot and step back. So we're gonna take a warrior one shape. So you can fiddle with it until it feels right. Or steady at the very least. <laughs> I'll take steady today. <laughs> Bring in the arms up, we'll pull the elbows back, kind of squeeze the shoulder blades together and then push them, kind of pull them around the edges. Arms up shoulders together and then apart arms up shoulder blades together and then apart now we're going to wrap the arms around behind the back you can use a strap if you want you can lace your fingers together i'm going to grab one wrist with the other hand and keeping my front knee bent for now i'm going to fold a little bit to the diagonal here in a bowing warrior now, if your arms want to go all the way up, you can certainly lift them up and over the back of your head. Oh, now, I'm going to release my arms and come up and straighten out my front leg. I'm not coming up all the way, but I'm coming up about halfway. And then... I'm going to turn myself a little more aligned down the midline, turn my feet a little bit. I've realigned my torso. And then I'm just folding in enough to feel that in my hamstrings on the front leg, which didn't take much. <laughs> it's there. Rinse 
some tension out of my neck and just pausing to pay attention to how my feet are positioned. And pressing down into the edges of my feet, just a little two more breaths. Bend my front knee and step back into down dog. And then you could just hold dog or finish that with the rest of the sun salutation. If it's a choice, you can make either choice. <laughs> and pick up the right leg, give it a good stretch back, spread the toes out and then Step that foot forward wherever it lands. We're gonna turn this into a standing splits. So we'll pick up the back leg, <laughs> see if we can balance. And if not, we'll just keep the hands on the floor, <laughs> reach up through that left leg, and then we'll bring it back down and come up halfway and fold <laughs> and come all the way up to standing. Give it a big stretch and find our way into our mountain pose. <laughs> oh, that feels nice. <laughs> Definitely a little different on one side. <laughs> Take a big breath, reach up. I'm going to grab that left wrist to a crescent stretch over to my right. Coming back to the center, all the weight on that left leg now into a balancing pose. And maybe <laughs> you do the same one you did last time, maybe you shake it up. leg and step ourselves back into the warrior one. And once you're steady, bring the elbows back to squish the shoulder blades together, push them out, and bring the arms back up, elbows back, push forward, back up. Oh, try to draw those shoulder blades in as tight as they'll go last round. Scoop them out to the sides. Oh, and then we're gonna wrap around. Now I grabbed my right wrist last time, so I'm grabbing my, or my left wrist, so I'm grabbing the right one this time. And we're gonna take ourselves into that bowing warrior. Oh. And again, maybe your arms are looser than mine. <laughs> and they'll come up off your back and go over the back of your head. You can take advantage of that. Good morning. <laughs> One more breath here. Oh, now again, I'm gonna let my hands go and I'm gonna orient my whole body just a little bit more towards the front, <laughs> over the top of my left thigh, which I've straightened out that leg. So that's a hamstring stretch and a calf muscle stretch. Again, kind of noticing my feet, making sure they're grounded and solid, stretching the mat between them. <laughs> trouble up here y'all. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to step ourselves back into down dog. Again, you could just hang out with down dog if that's more your jam. <laughs> you can finish the sun salutation. <laughs> we're going to take that <laughs> three-legged dog with the left leg up, 
spread the toes out <laughs> and then step in that leg forward. We're going to put all the weight on that leg and come into our standing splits balance. Again, sort of lifting through the right leg, however high it goes up. <laughs> Maybe the balance is really tricky today. <laughs> when you're ready, bring that right leg down, come up halfway and fold and come all the way up to standing. Oh. Give ourselves a shake, a stretch, <laughs> a little wardrobe malfunction adjustment, oh. and then a mountain pose. <laughs> Is it the same as the very first one we did? Are there some different qualities to it <laughs> that make it interesting and cool? Mm. Take a nice big breath, reach the arms up. We're going to come to a chair pose. We're going to add a little twist over to the right. So maybe you want to add like a deeper twist and bring your elbow around. You can keep it a little lighter. It's up to you. Or maybe it's up to your body. <laughs> your mind and your body may have different ideas. <laughs> Pick the ones your body thinks are all right. <laughs> Take one more breath. Oh, we're going to come back around to the middle. Now, I'm going to pick up my left leg and step out wide. Turn in my right foot with me. I'm going to take a wide angle here and fold into it. I might decide I want bigger. <laughs> Sometimes I do. You can wiggle the feet out or in to suit yourself. Now this can be a dangle where you just let yourself kind of drape forward. It can be a little more structured where you keep your spine more active, your arms more active. Let you decide. <laughs> In a moment, we're going to do a little sort of side to side sway, but for now, pick what you like best. Now, I'm just going to turn my toes out a little bit because I'm going to sway over here to the right and I'm going to bend my knee. And then you could leave your legs straight if you'd prefer. And I'm going to sway over to the left. You can make this a deeper squat. I'm just barely letting that knee bend, kind of sinking in a little bit. I've had sensitive knees all this week. <laughs> so just going and kindly in these directions. Let me go over to my left one more time. Coming back to the middle, I'm going to turn my feet so that my right foot turns all the way back to the front, and then I'm going to accommodate my left foot and just bring it in so it matches my hip, and then I'm going to roll open into a triangle pose. If you would rather do a side angle, you could do that instead. This knee come back to the center I'm bringing my block with me because I'm going to use it again on the other side again I'm going to just let myself hang out in the middle in whatever way seems appropriate today <laughs> I'm st standing strong in my legs and just letting my head and shoulders relax turn my left foot all the way to the back of the mat, adjust my accommodate with the right foot so it feels like it's lined up nice, and then I'm going to roll myself open into a triangle pose. And again, you could do a side angle, <laughs> if that one sounds like a better plan, you got other ideas for yourself. <laughs>
part that's going to be a little bit tricky because I'm going to step my right foot up back to the back of my mat to match where my left foot is. And I'm going to come back to my chair pose and twist to my left. <laughs> Again, you might add more to your twist or take away some to make it the best twist for you. And back to the middle, all the way up to standing. I'm gonna give myself a big stretch. And then I've got a mountain pose here at the back of my mat. I'm gonna hang out with it for just a breath. And then I'm gonna take a deep squat and I'm eventually gonna sit down <laughs> on my mat. Um, it will not be as simple <laughs> sit down as it might be for some folks. Some folks can just sit <laughs> on the mat from here. For me, it will be a little bit more like down dog <laughs> and just sitting down. Oh. So once we're sitting down, we're gonna do a little boat pose. Oh, I'll bring the legs in. Now you can do any version of the boat that you like. My favorite is this kind of holding on to the big toes, <laughs> floating boat. Mm. Kind of pressing into my hands and pulling against them and we're squeezing in through the midline. <laughs> and one more breath. Oh, and then we're gonna take that out. Now I'm gonna turn, but we'll bring the feet together you can wiggle your sit bones out from under you a little bit as you fold forward if that's helpful. You can bring the feet in tighter or leave it a little looser. I'm going to go for a little bit more of a loose shape and make more of a tortoise. So I'm going to let my back round, but it's going to take me a little few breaths. I'm going to slowly morph towards that rounder back. Don't want to round your back here you might you might put too much pressure in your lumbar spine so you can keep your back a little more elevated or aligned we're going to take about three more breaths i'm going to use my next inhale to slowly peel myself back up Do the hips and then we'll give the legs a little shake out. Now I'm going to start turning to my left side. So I'm going to bring my left knee up. You could have your right knee up if you'd prefer, and you can wrap the legs differently or just sit cross legged, whatever you think is going to be best. I'm going to twist around to my left. I'm sending my sit bones down into the floor, just getting a little taller, a little more regal. <laughs> I'm pulling on my knee a little bit and then resisting. So I've got both a kind of shoulder traction and also a little bit more sensation in this outer hip by doing that. So if that seems like something you might wanna try, give that a whirl. Both my leg and my arm are pulling at equal measure. I think I can take one more breath. And then I'm going to come out of there. Now, there's a couple different options for what could happen next. We could do a two legs stacked on top of each other um, and fold. You could do this shape and lay on your back. Or you can take this left leg and swing it around behind you and come into a pigeon with the right leg as the bent leg, which is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but you can do any of those versions. I'm also gonna prop myself up so it's a little more like a back bend, but you could lie down a little closer to like 
them up more of a forward bend shape where your body leans into the floor. about three more breaths. Now, depending on which choice you made, you might have different ways of getting out of the pose. I'm gonna kind of lean to my right, pull my left leg back around, and then give everything a bit of a shimmy. Now the right leg was kind of spicy <laughs> with the uh, pigeon and it's gonna be spicy again with this twist. So because of that, it might be a little different than what I experienced on the left side. It might actually not be. <laughs> I mean, it might be not quite as spicy as I've already been spicy or it could be more spicy. <laughs> so you feel it out. <laughs> I'm still working this kind of isometric. I'm pulling on my knee and pushing into my hand in equal measure. And uh, it feels nice. <laughs> I'm going to carry on with that. And two more breaths here. pressure and this is going to turn into my pigeon on the opposite side by swinging the right leg back. So I'll need these. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. I will need the blocks. version on your back or seated and not necessarily this full version of the pigeon slash swan pose <laughs> however you'd like to refer to it as Up to my leg and take two more breaths. And then I'm going to lean over this direction and bring that back leg around. Take a moment <laughs> to kind of rinse everything out. Now, I'm going to invite you to do um, some kind of an inverted posture. So um, I'm going to do a supported shoulder stand. I'm going to use my pillow, but if you don't have a pillow, a yoga block works really great. This goes underneath your hips. You could also do a supported bridge pose, or you could do like a legs up the wall or legs over the couch kind of shape. So that's up to you. If you want to skip the um, full inversion, you don't have to elevate the hips, you can just put your legs in the air, and that will also work. Now for me, it helps to have a little bit of support for my shoulders as well, so I'm gonna put a blanket down, make sure it's wrinkle-free, <laughs> and then that will accommodate 
accommodate my shoulders. So when you're elevated in any fashion at all, if you feel a lot of pressure in the top of the shoulders or in the neck, having the blanket there is really nice. You can have the blanket only go to the top of the shoulders so the neck has a little bit more room or the whole thing can be supported by a blanket. I find just having a softer surface is nice. Um, and then once the legs are up, if you're taking them up, you can give them a little kind of jiggle <laughs> to help keep the, get the lymph moving toward the heart. Can do little ankle circles. You could lower one leg and leave the other one up and do a little extra core work. Switch it when you're ready. is also really nice if it's done. If you have tight hip flexor stretching the legs out and letting the hip flexor really stretch feels really nice. It's another way to use that elevated pelvis. or so breaths. And then you can bring your feet back to the floor you were doing a really mild thing like your legs up the couch or something you can stay there if you want but otherwise we're gonna take out whatever's under the hips and take a few moments for Shavasana or whatever final relaxation sounds nice if you'd rather you could do a seated position yourself and see if there's another layer of tension or, or stress you can let go of. Mm -hmm. Stay a little bit longer, but mm. the body 
I may have let go again just a little bit more deeply. So take advantage and lean into that. Please just notice your breath again. Take a nice deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. You can start to wiggle and stretch as you like. When it seems like a good idea, bring yourself to a seated position. <laughs> Detail was the last part to come up. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for some morning vinyasa. Let's take a nice big breath together. And a big sigh. <sighs> Namaste, friends. <laughs>